your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The Grants Bahama Children's Home new board of directors and executive director celebrating the final stage of the rebuilding process post-Hurricane Dorian as they focus on a return to normalcy and stability for the children and home. Storm surge caused by Hurricane Dorian forced the evacuation of the children and staff sheltered at the home and the temporary relocation of the children to New Providence as the home was rebuilt and refurnished. However, restrictions due to the global pandemic significantly impacted the rebuilding process. During that time, a new board of directors was established with a group of members of the Grants Bahama community and of the nonprofit community abroad. Board Chairman Kevin D. Seymour explaining that the rebuilding was made possible thanks to the extended community. Seymour noting that staff, local volunteers and businesses showed up to help clean, donate supplies, resources and financial assistance to repair the campus and replenish the content, adding that there was also a tremendous outpouring of support and donations from national and international donors and nonprofits to enable not only the physical recovery but also to lay the groundwork for the home's next chapter. Last month, new playground areas were completed with separate areas and equipment based on ages and added security features were installed for enhanced monitoring of the campus for the safety and protection of the children. The backup power generators have been delivered and the building and safety committee is focused on installation ahead of the start of the next hurricane season in June. Other members of the board are Vice Chair Carla McIntosh, Treasurer Charmaine Adderley, Secretary Sarah Stratton, and Directors Leslie Davies Baptista, Patrice Feaster, Lynn Freno, Deborah Hastings, Andrew Stofflett, and Patima Zara Kaboob were appointed to the current board. The board of directors also appointed Executive Director June Hutchison, an accomplished administrator with over 35 years in administration, education, and counseling, to lead the home at a particularly challenging time for the children's development due to COVID. As health officials continue their observance of Kidney Month, tonight Sabrina Brown tells us about the various functions of these vital organs. The kidneys are two bean-shaped organs located in the lower back on each side of the spine. Their functions are numerous and are critical to the overall health of the body. The first thing is that it controls our fluids. So pretty much, you know, you urinate, so whatever you drink and whatever you, whatever you drink in and you, you would urinate it out. Second of all, it controls um, such chemicals called electrolytes, which is like sodium, potassium, chloride, the acid in your blood. So it controls the removal and the balance of those things as well. Thirdly, the kidney controls blood pressure. So it manages salt and water handling in your body. And that's why we always say avoid salt because salt can, can make you have um, really bad hypertension. The fourth thing is that it also is involved in anemia. Anemia is when your body makes red blood cells. Consultant in nephrology and internal medicine at the Kidney Center and the Grand Bahama Health Services, Dr. Monique Pratt, says the kidneys are also responsible for bone health. So it involves in calcium and phosphorus metabolism, which means if, if your kidneys um, get damaged, it cannot handle calcium and phosphorus very well. So those are the important things that kidneys are involved in. They also remove all the toxins from your body, like the liver. So pretty much it's like a bank, I think about it. Whatever you put in is what you're going to urinate out. So um, the kidneys work like a sieve. They're like a sieve. It's like a strainer, you know, which is sieve with food. And so it, it actually, as it gets damaged, the kidneys get leaky. So you want to keep the kidneys as healthy as possible so it can function, function well to, to, to those things. There are two types of kidney failure. Acute kidney injury is when the kidneys shut down abruptly. Those patients and sometimes they can recover and sometimes they may not recover. Those are, there are many causes for acute kidney injury. It can be done from, it can be caused by a blockage going to the kidney, a decrease in blood flow, severe dehydration, uh, medications, a drop in your blood pressure. So therefore you have decreased blood flow going to the kidneys and therefore the kidneys may shut down. You could have what's called post obstruction, which means someone who has a large prostate, they can have a backup of the urine, which can cause a backup into the kidneys, that can cause acute kidney injury, that can usually be relieved. So those things, when it's acute, those patients can tend to recover. 
If they require dialysis for a short term, then we can just dialyze them for a little bit on dialysis, and then they can come off. That's acute kidney injury. But Dr. Pratt says the majority of their patients present with chronic kidney failure. The number one cause worldwide is diabetes. She outlines the five stages of the debilitating disease. So if the kidneys function 90 to 100 percent, but you have like a little structural change, maybe a little blockage here and there, something's a little wrong, or mild damage, that's stage one. Stage five is the worst, when the kidneys function about 10%, I would say, and that's to the point where you need, need to go on dialysis. You need some form of renal replacement therapy, either in, in the case of dialysis or kidney transplant. Stages two, three, and four, as you can tell, the kidneys are working around maybe 30, 40% for stage four. For stage three, they're working about 50%. For stage two, they're working about 60%. So that way patients can understand a little bit more about when I speak to them about their kidneys, I always tell them the kidneys are working 50%, 60%, they have an idea of the stage of how it works. Dr. Pratt recommends that you always know your baseline kidney function by getting your annual blood work and only take medications prescribed by a doctor as some pain medications and vitamins vitamin supplements can cause harm to your kidneys. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Thanks, Sabrina. Hands Across Grants Bahama Ministries is hosting a religious event titled Revival Fire on Grants Bahama from Monday, March 21st to Thursday, March 27th at the Independence Park. The event is intended for those of Christian faith. According to organizer evangelist Elmore Smith, the seven-day event will feature seven speakers and will begin at 6.30 nightly. One of the guest speakers, Pastor Abner Mius, invites all to come expecting. Basically, this is for the body of Christ, for those who are sleeping, those who are lazy in church, that the Spirit of God will revive them and quicken them, that they get back on board, because uh, there's a lot of souls out there need to reach, and then uh, the evangelists, them, who are not going out, not, not evangelizing, uh, been praying that the fire of God will revive them, get, stir up the gifts back in them to, in order for them to go and to reach souls. You know, so we, 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 we pray and we hope in a move of God. We hope in a mighty move of God in this revival. According to Acts chapter 3, the Bible says there was a two men who have to go to pray in the temple. But the beggar was by the door. He just know himself. He knows he's a cripple. He cannot move. But he was expecting something. What he was expecting for is a little bit money. But the men of God, they see something higher than money. And they have to, I mean, speak over his life so he receive. Uh, you know what we call a um, healing so Grand Bahama so when we came by the park I don't know what you expect but at least come in with a little expectation and then whatever we speak on the air will be happen a youth night is also included in the event and Pastor Renardo Butcher invites all youth groups to attend on the 25th. Eric Clark, a guest speaker, says Revival Fire is needed on Grants Bahama and he is excited to be a part of the event. You know, the Bible says also that, that as the prodigal son was in the pig pen, the Bible says he came this census. I believe that looking at the crime, looking at the violence, looking at all the chaos that's happening in Grand Bahama today, if you bring your youths out on Friday night, they're going to come to their census because only the word of God has the power and the ability to really change the minds of the young people. And I believe Friday night is the night. So on the 25th, bring your youth department. We're going to have a grand occasion on the 25th. We believe that in the times in which we live, this country, man, this island, we need to pray. We need to seek the face of God. So I'm excited about this revival. I'm excited for the theme that he's chosen, linking in with the blood of Jesus and the cross. And as we open the word, because that's where the power is, we believe that people will come to a realization of the fact that Christ still lives. He lives in our hearts. There's power in prayer and there's salvation as we study the Word of God. And now it is time for a check on sports with Jay Philippe. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to Sports with a whole lot of sports. Let's jump right in. 
The University of the Bahamas Athletics Women's Volleyball Team, along with women's softball, will be in Grand Bahama recruiting talent this weekend. The Mingo's volleyball program has had some success with players from Grand Bahama and the Northern Bahamas. Volleyball assistant coach Cece Stillian says they are heading to Grand Bahama with specific goals. We're looking for that diamond in a rough, like coach would always say. Um, I know that for the past two years, the pandemic had put a damp on sports, but we're looking for young ladies who are going to help grow the program, who are willing to be dedicated academically and athletically. Switching gears now, the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture will be conducting a symposium on Thursday for all sporting federations and associations. The symposium will focus on concussions as it relates to sports. Now, according to Norris Bain, Deputy Director of Sports in the Northern Bahamas, the symposium will feature a number of presenters, including former NFL and Rhodes scholar Dr. Myron Rule. The ministry thought it was a very good idea to put on, along with Dr. Rule, to put on um, a symposium for all sports persons, because you know concussions do happen in sports, and it happens uh, more frequent than we might realize. So Dr. Roll is uh, is going to be uh, doing a symposium starting tomorrow with several other presenters uh, to bring awareness to uh, this uh, most important topic as it relates to sports, uh, concussion. In track and field, young Zion Shepard recently traveled to Apopka, Florida, where he took part in the Florida Youth Invitational Track Meet coach by Jarrell Forbes. Zion won a total of three gold medals, placing first in the 200 and 400 meters. He also captured gold in the long jump. And finally, in sports, coach Yona Ole Miss Lady Rebels will be in action on Friday in the first round of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. Her seven-seeded Rebels will take on ten-seeded South Dakota with a chance to advance to the second round. Tip-off time is 1.30 p.m. And that's a quick check on sports, ladies and gents. I'm Jay Philippe. Be blessed.